Hey everyone, in this video I'll be discussing a method with which you can quickly find the time period of SHM uh, of this mass M. So I mean the conventional method is just like uh, you displace the mass M by an amount of x downwards and because of that there will be extensions in each of these springs. So let's say this pulley moves down by an amount of x1, this pulley moves down by an amount of x2. So we can write the spring force in this spring to be k times x minus x2 right because the extension in this spring is going to be x minus x2 and similarly you can write uh, uh, write the extension in each of the spring and for each of these pulleys write sigma f equals 0 and then you try to eliminate x2 and x1 so that's the typical method right there is a much easier way of finding the time period for SHM and we are going to be learning that in this video and for that we'll be finding the equivalent spring constant Okay, so we'll be finding the equivalent spring constant of this whole system. So we'll be replacing this whole system by, uh, by a single spring whose spring constant is going to be k equivalent. And then uh, this time period of this system is simply going to be 2 pi square root m by k equivalent, right? So that is what we'll be doing. We have to write the energy stored in the springs. So let's say... Uh, you know, we have pulled this mass by an amount of x downwards, which means there is extension in each of these springs. When a spring is being pulled by a force F, we can write the energy stored in the spring as half kx squared, but we know kx is simply equal to F. So we can also write this as F squared by 2k, simply in terms of F. If we don't want to deal with the uh, extensions and all, we can just simply use this form. Right In this form, we just have to deal with the force. Uh, let's say the tension up top is T. So as the string is massless, the tension is going to be T everywhere. And as the pulley is massless, the tension here will be 2T. So it will be 2T here as well and it will be 2T here as well. And the tension here will be 4T. So now what we are going to do is the, the energy stored in this, uh, in this spring is going to be t squared divided by 2k right and the energy stored in this and if you observe this k by 8 and this k by 4 are springs in series right we can just find their k equivalent on this side so their k equivalent is going to be 1 divided by k by 8 plus 1 divided by k by 4 so from here we'll get the k equivalent to be k by 12 so the energy stored in these two springs is going to be 2t that is a tension on in those springs divided by 2 times the k equivalent of the spring that is going to be k by 12. Now similarly <coughs> if we if you find the equivalent spring constant of these two springs as these two also are in series you'll get the spring constant to be k by 48. So the energy stored in that spring is going to be t squared divided by twice of k divided by 48. Okay, so now our goal was to convert this system into a spring mass system, into a single spring mass system, and the spring constant of this spring is k equivalent, and the tension here is 4t, right? So the energy of this system will be 4t squared upon 2k equivalent, if we were to pull this down by an amount of x exactly like the situation on the left exactly like the situation on the left so now as these two are equivalent systems we can equate their energies right we can cancel out the twos and we'll get 1 by k equivalent 16 divided by k equivalent to be 16 plus 48 plus 48 uh, there will be also a by k and you'll get the value of k equivalent to be k by 7 so now it's a simple spring mass system with spring constant of 7 k by 7 and uh, we know the time period of oscillations of this spring mass system is simply so this is the time period of oscillations of the of this system so that's it for this video guys if you have any doubts please comment down below and if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe 